I was uh, 13 when I was watching uh, Wolfgang Puck on the Home Shopping Network or whatever it was. And yeah, it was it was the most romantic scene you could ever imagine. You know, he's got his white chef's coat on and he's grilling this piece of quail over this wood burning oven. Yeah, it's like beautiful scene. And it was a it was apple glazed quail. And all I could think was, damn it, I gotta make that. And uh, I was living on my dad's farm at the time, and he was like, uh, sure, why not? So we went out, we killed the quail, I made this very secondhand version of the sauce, it was like apple jam or some shit, and uh, yeah, yeah, it was at that moment I knew, you know, that's what I wanted to be doing. And it was uh, pretty insatiable, you know, the appetite to continue, so. Uh, anyway, uh, after, uh, after high school, all my friends are like going to college and all I can think is, how the fuck am I going to get out of Florida? And the uh, Gourmet Magazine had the uh, 50 best restaurants list at that time, and I wrote to like 25 of those chefs like, uh, look man, I'll just show up on your back door. And there it is. Look at you, thanks. Uh, I'll just show up on your back door. And I got a call back from 10 of the places, and I was pretty much able to choose wherever I wanted to go. Uh, eventually, I found myself working in Spain for the next couple of years. Uh, huh. We had two wood-burning ovens, you know, and uh, anything that came in, didn't matter what it was, it was going to go on the grill, and we were going to use it. Didn't matter if it was, you know, well, and we never used anything out of season. You know, the chef was very adamant about uh, simplicity and not molesting things for what they were. Uh, you know, like, we were getting in black market caviar from Iran. You know, because he's like, well, I'm going to serve caviar, but I'm not willing to serve anything less than the very best this world has to offer. The experience was set the moment you drove up and you like crested this hill and the mountains overlook in front of you and you see like, smoke coming out of this big stone restaurant and you can smell the coals and oh, you go in and, and anybody who's there is there to produce something for you. You know, there's no bullshit. I mean, well, yeah, we're not going to deep fry this thing for you because it's the best steak in all of Spain. But, we had, we had our limits. <laughs> there's the, right now, there's the uh, 50 best restaurants list in the world. And uh, number one on that list is Noma in Copenhagen. And number 31 all the way down there is this place that I worked at in Spain. Now, I would not say one is better or worse than the other. I would just say that they're distinct. You know, in Spain, we're in the middle of the mountains, and in Copenhagen, we're on a river running through the middle of the city. So, you know. <clears throat> and that's just a part of the experience that is set by what it is. And the unfortunate thing is that when you say something is the best in the world, it automatically demeans everything on that list down. Doesn't matter if someone's more genuine or honest or hardworking down at number 50, doesn't matter because they're not number one, so they're not as good. Well, what the fuck does that even mean, you know? Uh, next, yeah. Yeah, a uh, chef friend from New York got me the job at Next. And uh, came to Next right when I got back in the States. Uh, well, it, uh, it changes three times a year. Every four months, you know, we got a different menu. Like the one we got right now is a uh, game meat based menu. And the one coming up after that is vegan, and the one after that is very traditional uh, French. Yeah. But it causes a lot of distress, I promise you. You know, you wake up one morning and everything is different. And it's, it's fun. 
I guess uh, given the price point, it wants itself to be high end. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, with high-end dining, you know, people always think price par, price point means it's like, you know, high-end. But I also think it's uh, exclusivity. You know, like you could be selling things for tw that made you nervous. Did you? you didn't think I would open this bottle. Mm -hmm. I did. Uh, you know, uh, you got things that you're selling for twenty-five bucks a pop for a ticket, but uh, you only have thirty-five seats, so it's exclusive. And the food you're serving might be just as good anywhere else. I'm not using these. Hey, can we get some new ones? These got dirt on them. They're right there. Just a second. So anyway, the food you're serving might be just as good anywhere else. And I think that a lot of people we get in, a lot of people we get in are uh, just looking for some place, uh, just an outlet for their money. You know, just some place, some place to put it. But, uh, I mean, to me, high-end dining is much more about the proper execution of a higher idea, if that makes sense. You know, somebody with a philosophy. Uh, yes. That this, that's a good friend. That's a good friend. Yes, I'm going to more than the pass out, so that's, that's a good friend. Uh, uh, so anyway, a proper execution of a higher idea, yeah. Um, somebody with a philosophy, you know, there's no bullshit. Uh, and I would say, unfortunately, at next, uh, uh, the experience you get when you go there is what they want you to have. You know, all oh, for this course, I want them to feel like they're walking in the woods in nature. Uh, you know, and it's... To me, it's a bit dishonest. It's not even like we're uh, producing food for people we love. Uh, you know, it's like, uh, this is what you're gonna have, this is how you're gonna have it. You know, it doesn't even matter if something's out of season. Um, I don't care if those carrots, carrots taste like garbage. Don't give a damn. I'm gonna use them, make them taste good, and they'll work into this idea I have. We're just gonna do it. You know, there's this, uh, uh, there's this restaurant I worked at in Alabama for a while, and I would say the food we served there was, by a long shot, by a very long shot, better than anything we produced at Next, which is interesting, because it's a lot less expensive, you know? I'm going to go back to you because you're so nice. Uh, it's a lot less expensive to eat at this place. You know, I've got to save some for me. It's a lot less expensive. You know, you can uh, go in, you can eat better food, and uh, just sit at a big horseshoe bar and uh, just not give a damn. You can Thank you. <laughs> just not, you can just not give a damn, you know? And I remember, oh, oh, like one time, hmm, hmm. One time this guy walks in, this FedEx guy walks in, and he's like, uh, hey man, I got a bunch of black truffle that somebody sent. And the chef cuisine's like, dude, that's 10,000 G's worth of black truffle. Like, what am I? What am I? Well, if they're good, we're going to take them, and we're going to put them on every goddamn thing we can. I mean, apparently, the purveyor had sent them over because, well, you know, these things are the shit. You know, and you have to use them while they are as fantastic as they are. So he's like, uh, yeah, man, I'll take them all. We had a bunch of purveyors that, you know, they, they knew locally, and we would, they just bring us in stuff like beets. And we'd just take, like, all our technical prowess and make just the best beet salad. And I really, uh, man, I really have an appreciation for that whole side of this thing. Yeah, I remember watching Wolfgang Puck with that quill and thinking, damn it, I'm going to make that my family's going to love it. And it's for me, but that's what the best restaurants do, you know, just, just no bullshit. They just are who they are, they're not trying to be something they're not, and they're just the best that they are. 
you know, you, 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 you acquire some level of education, and for what reason? I can produce all these wonderful tasty things because they're tasty, because I can. No, 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 no. I produce them, and they taste good, and then I give them to you, so you can be happy with the whatever it is I produce.